I never would have dreamed that the WNBA would start my freshman year in college and I would have the opportunities to play in a league that were designed just for me. Folks, she is not dreaming anymore. Welcome back to Sports Locker Sunday. I'm here with the woman that's now in a league of her own, Tamika Catchings. Tamika, thank you for stopping in on, on what's a crazy weekend <laughs> for you. Appreciate the time. We know the family's kept you up all night. <laughs> <laughs> she looks great. Me. Thank you for having me. She looks great. Thank you for being here. Last night, you've had, what, almost 24 hours to let this thing sink in. It's a rare breed now to see a player who's dominated their league start in a city and never left. I mean, that is almost unheard of this day and age. What can you say that last night brought to you in terms of emotion? We saw you all night. It was a tough night to get through, but how can you put that into words? Lots of tears, <laughs> um, but just very, very thankful. And I'm very blessed to have had the opportunity to not only just be here in Indianapolis, which I knew nothing about the city when I first got here, but uh, 16 years later, you know, just uh, the highs and the lows and the organization, the way they've stuck with me, more importantly, the fans. And the fans are in the community my teammates, the coaches, I mean, that's why, I'm, why I stayed. That's why I chose to be a part of this organization. And, you know, it's, last night, it just kind of, <laughs> not that you need a reminder, not that you need that, but the way that everybody responded, um, it's just, like you see the flag, it's like, ah, oh, it's just, uh, I don't know. Majestic. Yeah, it is, it is. Once you get out there, I know you've had gutsy performances in this town once or twice before, but how tough was it to get through that speech last night? Whew. I was trying <laughs> not to cry. It really was. And it's funny, earlier in the day, you know, we had my whole family was over at the house and we're getting ready to eat and, you know, we all say prayer before we dig in and as we're holding hands I just wanted to let my family know how much I appreciated oh. them and I like started crying, yeah. bawling crying. So all my little nephews, you know, they don't know any better. They're like, it's okay, you're okay. We're gonna eat, we're still gonna have the food. The food's <laughs> and they're like, okay, hurry up, <laughs> hurry up, wipe your tears away because we're hungry and you know, we want cupcakes at the end of the night. But um, it, it was cool, you know, like to start off with that. And then of course, moving into the ceremonies, getting through the speech and yeah. you know, you just, you're overwhelmed with the emotion because of the fans because of my coaches sitting front row, you know, two of them that I've had and talked to Coach Winters. He was yep. my second coach here with Indiana earlier in the week and, you know, no and Ann Donovan, you know, coached me um, early on with the fever. So like talking to everybody that has been a part of my journey from the professional standpoint and then of course getting all these text messages and messages from people that, you know, family, friends, fan, teammate, coaches you know, from other areas of life. It's just, it's final, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. that's the grand, like the grand finale. I know I keep saying that, but it's like, yep. okay, you, there's no coming back <laughs> from that. There isn't. It's in the rafters, it sorry. Is. It's up there for good. It is. It's up there for good. You talk about journey, and we know Tamika does so much in the community as a player, but really what stood out to me last night, as you mentioned, you thought you were put on this earth for a mission that's now really just starting. What did, what did you mean by looking ahead past basketball and really you think your, your most important work still ahead of you? Well, I mean, I'm a very faith-oriented pe person and people that know me know that about me. And I've always said that I feel like whatever comes after basketball will have more impact on this earth and more impact on people than what I did during, you know, during being on the court. Yeah, and did you think that was gonna be the case as a player? I mean, you're caught up in all this hoopla, four gold medals, you're traveling the world, you're at the pinnacle of your sport, and now to be able to say that, did that catch you off guard maybe a little bit? I'd say the last couple years. Yeah. You know, really the last couple years, knowing that it was about to transition and really trying to figure out what does that look like. Right. But early on, I mean, 
most players you don't know you come in and this is something you've been dreaming about and you're so focused on making sure that every single day on the court like you're taking advantage of every opportunity it's hard to kind of see beyond that right but of course you know as you get older <laughs> and you start thinking all right how many more years am I going to do this and how many more years can I do this and keep up with the younger players coming in and what does that transition look like and as I started kind of focusing on that it was just like you get that feeling and you know my faith kicks in and it's like just trust me trust me I got you and that's the same way that I felt going into the WNBA tore my ACL yep. senior year and I just remember sitting in the locker room and feeling like that nudge from God like I got you trust me and then I got drafted because I was worried I'm like nobody's gonna want me nope. and now I like the last couple of years I felt that nudge like I got you We'll see. Another lady who's a great role model who I know very near and dear to your heart, Pat Summit. Mm -hmm. You told a great, great story after the ceremony of, of a moment yesterday when you felt Pat was at Banker's Life. Just sh share that again yeah. if you can. Yeah, so um, you know, I walked into the gym and, and just sitting on the sideline with Debbie Ann and Ellie. Uh, we were just talking and Literally, we're talking and we both look out and I'm like, oh my God, there's confetti coming down. And at first, she, you know, we're joking around and she was like, oh yeah, that's just a celebration. We're getting ready for tonight. <laughs> but as we watched it, it was orange. And she said, you know what? That's Pat. Like Pat is in this building and that's her sign of letting, letting her, letting you know that she's here with you. And we both kind of like had a moment of silence yeah. because it really was like watching it and it just floated and you know how confetti comes. Not it's very rare that it's just one piece right. that comes down and that, there was clearly no confetti last night. No. Wasn't so where did it come point. from? That's unbelievable. What would you say to coach tonight? We got video of her that we just pulled up. What, what would you say to coach? Thank you. You know, thank you for, um, for everything. Thank you for allowing a girl like me and the dream that I had, you know, especially coming in and freshman year when the WNBA came and she knew what my goal was. But thank you for pushing me beyond what I thought I had in myself and always believing in me. And, you know, I would always say this about Pat. She wasn't really as concerned about what we did on the court or even in the classroom. But most importantly, she always said that I will raise great people not women, not man, but a great person. And the legacy that she's left behind all of us, there's only 161 of us that played <laughs> for her. But every single one of us and every single one of our stories is a part of her legacy and our life and all the things that we've done is a part of who she is and that seed that she put in us that continues to grow. Not to change gears on you, but quickly on Paul George. I know you're very close with him. Mm -hmm. He once said, you know, there's only 124 in this town, but, but now appears he might be on his way out of town. What's your gauge on the situation as a whole and, and uh, with, with your pal Paul? What, what's the uh, You know, I, I mean, I think, you know, w w one thing I've always told Paul, regardless, is, you know, I support him 100%. And, you know, you, you look at somebody that, you want to be here, yeah. you know, and, and selfishly I want him to be here just because, you know, watching him and him being a part of this organization and the way the community has accepted him, kind of the same way that they accepted me. Sure. And so, you know, it's kind of a little disheartening, a little bit, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, no matter what happened, you know, that, I mean, family, we're family now, yep. so no matter what <laughs> happens, you know, you know that I support him. Excellent. Tamika, you're always family here. Thank you so much for stopping in. We know it's been a crazy weekend last night. I don't, I don't know if there's going to be another night like that in Fever history. So congratulations again. Have a great summer. Thank you, Charles. Don't go away too far. We know I you'll won't. be around. I won't. I'll be right here. <laughs> Thank you. We